In this video, we're going to be on page word six out of your textbook, uh, in which the page is entitled, Start a Document. And here, uh, you are going to begin a new document uh, by simply typing text in the blank document in the document window. Now, Word uses a feature called Word Wrap that automatically moves the insertion point to the next line of the document as you type. That way, so you only press enter when you want to start a new paragraph or blank line. And what we're going to be doing in here, uh, we're going to be typing a quick memo uh, to a marketing staff uh, because uh, the way the textbook is laid out is that it's pretending that you are an employee of a company and most of our documents are going to be centered around this company that you are employed with. And so in this case, you are going to be typing a memo to the marketing staff. So if we take a look, the textbook's also laid out where there are multiple steps, and this is what we're going to be calling the walkthrough. And what you do is you complete each individual step. During these videos, I'll read you the uh, direction on the step, tell you a little bit about it, and then you can complete the task as you go through uh, while watching the video. Now feel free to pause this video at any point in time, or rewind it if you have some problems or difficulties. And if we take a look on page word six, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at step one, and step one tells us that we are to type Quest Specialty Travel and then press our enter key twice. So we're going to type in Quest Specialty Travel, and then we're going to hit our enter key on our keyboard twice. Now each time you press the enter key, the insertion point is going to move to the start of the next line. Now, if you press the wrong key, you can always press the backspace key to erase the mistake and try again. Now, the backspace key will delete the letter or the space that is directly to the left of your insertion point. Now, if you're familiar with using the delete key, the delete key actually deletes to the right of the insertion point. So there's a little bit of a difference between delete and backspace. Step two tells us we are going to type in two and both in capital letters and a colon. So, and then we're going to press our tab key twice. So we type in TO colon and then we're going to hit the tab key on our keyboard twice. And of course pressing the tab key moves the insertion point several spaces to the right. Now you can use the tab key to align the text in a memo header or to indent the first line of a paragraph. And generally uh, it will move it approximately about one half of an inch. Uh, over there, and that is uh, the general spacing. It's approximately that. Step three tells us that we are now going to type in QST managers and then press enter. So we're going to type in QST managers and then we press our enter key, and that will take us down to the start of the next line. Next, we have quite a bit of text that we're going to type in. So we're going to be typing in from, colon, hitting our tab key twice, then entering Ron Dawson, pressing enter. Then we're going to type in date, colon, hitting our tab key twice, entering in the date of March 13th, 2016, pressing enter. And then we're going to type in RE, colon, which in business that stands for regarding. Hit our tab key twice marketing, meeting, enter, enter. So I'm going to go ahead and complete those steps, uh, steps on here. So we type in from, hit our tab key twice, and you notice that it lines up that text on there. And of course there's Ron Dawson. Press my enter key. Now we're going to input in the date. Hit my tab key twice, March 13th, comma, of 2016. Here's the regarding, the RE, that's an abbreviation for that. Hit my tab key twice and type in marketing meeting. And then I'm going to hit enter twice. Now, if you ever see any red or blue wavy lines, sometimes they appear under the words you type, which indicates a possible spelling or grammar error. Spelling and grammar checking is one of the many automatic features you will encounter as you type. Now, when you see those little wavy lines and everything, they will appear on your screen, but they will not print. Step five reads that we're going to type 
The next marketing staff meeting will be held on the 17th of March at 2 p.m. in the conference room on the ground floor, and then we're going to press our space bar. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. And notice as I type it um, on there that the insertion point, and that's the blinking line, um, is constantly flashing. That tells me where my next uh, letter is going to appear. Of course, notice that I've misspelled marketing there, and that shows you an example of that red line there. Anytime you see a red line, you can always right-click on it, and it gives you suggestions. So in this case, we see that there's marketing. So I'm going to go ahead and make that correction as I type. And of course, we're going to continue on by typing in meeting. It will be held on the... And pay close attention to this, because as I type the 17th, Watch what, watch what happens to the TH when I hit my space bar after that. And of course you'll notice that, uh, of course as the insertion point moves automatically to the next line in the document, as it will here in a little bit, you'll notice that Word automatically changed 17th to where the TH is small uh, on there. And of course this is what we call autocorrect. And autocorrect automatically makes typographical adjustments and detects and adjusts typing errors such as certain misspelled words like T-A-H-T for that. And also incorrect capitalization as you type or to make things appear a little bit better such as this where it makes it what we call a superscript. I'm going to continue on typing here. And it says of March at 2 space P dot M dot in the conference room on the ground floor. And of course, notice it moved on to the next line automatically without me having to press enter. Of course, after I type in my period, I'm going to press my space bar. Now, of course, to reverse an autocorrect adjustment immediately, you can always click on the undo button, which is right up here, and this is the undo button. You can reverse that uh, on there as well. So that is a new feature of 2013, or a different feature of 2013, where it automatically does that for you. Uh, and you can have to hit the undo if you do not want it to occur. Next, on step six, we're going to continue typing. And we're going to type, heading the agenda will be the launch of our new Borino Explorer Trek, a rigorous 10-day tour of dense jungles, deep caverns, and remote villages of Borino's north, northern coast, scheduled for September 17th. So, as I continue typing this, just kind of follow along and watch as the um, insertion point moves as I type. So I type the agenda will be the launch of our new Reno Explorer Trek, a rigorous 10 day tour of the dense jungles deep caves and remote villages of Barinos northern coast scheduled for September 2017. Of course notice I've misspelled northern up here so once again, I can just right click on that and make the change there. Of course, when you type the uh, first few characters of a letter, occasionally if it's turned on, because uh, this is a feature that you can turn on and off, uh, you will see um, a word that may be completed, such as September. So if I delete through this a little bit, and if I retype this in, and if I start typing in the first few letters of September, you can tell if the autocorrect or autocomplete features on or off. As you notice, right through here, you'll notice that it says September, press enter to insert. And of course, this feature is what we call the autocomplete, and it's going to suggest text that you want to insert quickly into your document. So instead of fully typing in September, I can just press my enter here and it finishes typing that word for me. Of course, you can ignore it if you want to and continue typing. Uh, or you can use it by just pressing your enter key. So if, once I finish off my sentence here, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. And in step seven, it tells us that first of all, we want to press enter. 
So we're going down to the next line. And then we're going to type in some more text. We're going to type in Kai Hakeda is in Kuching, hammering out the details. A pre uh, preliminary draft of the tour brochure is attached. Bring your creative ideas for launching this exciting new tour to the meeting. Now, when you press enter and type the new paragraph, you'll probably notice that the word adds more space between the paragraphs than it does between the lines in each paragraph. And this is part of the default style for the paragraphs in Word, which is called the normal style. Now, if you like it to be maintained where there's no uh, extra space between that, that's where you would want to use the no spacing style. And typically in most businesses uh, on there, especially if you're trying to write professional documents, you may want to use the no spacing uh, to prevent uh, some of these extra lines and that will allow you the option to choose uh, how much space is between there. Now, if you want, uh, and that's where we say, if you want the uniform spacing between lines and paragraphs, that's where you apply the no spacing style to the document by clicking the no spacing button styles in the styles group. So here's the styles group on the home tab, uh, or on the home tab and home ribbon. There's the no styles button that's there. Uh, and that is before you begin to type. Now, if you want to change it afterwards, you're going to have to select the text and then click on no spacing. Now step eight tells us that we want to position our mouse pointer. Now our mouse pointer on here, you'll probably notice, uh, which if you need to get a clearer understanding of what each mouse pointer is and what they do, uh, you can take a look on page Word 5 uh, on there, which shows you the common mouse pointers in Word. And this is what we call the I-beam pointer. And that's going to move the insertion point in a document uh, to select text uh, that's on there. And we're going to point, uh, we're going to position this pointer after four, but before the space in the last sentence of the first paragraph. So here we have up here, and notice where it says scheduled four uh, on there. We're going to click on this, and instead of four, we're placing it just before the space. So we need to put it just directly after the R. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click the insertion point on there. Uh, or we're going to click and that's going to move the insertion point for us. So just moving your mouse pointer to, around does not move your insertion point. You actually have to click to move it. So if I was going to move it in different locations, I would have to point and then click. So we want it directly after the R in 4. Step 9 tells us that we're going to press the backspace three times, so we're going to delete out the word for, and then we're going to type to depart in. And of course, back, uh, pressing backspace removes the characters before the insertion point. Then of course, we've typed in to depart in. On step 10, it tells us that we're going to move the insertion point before staff in the first sentence. So we're going to move our insertion point right up here before the word staff. And then it tells us we're going to press the delete six times. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, that will remove the word staff and the space that's after it. And of course, remember also pressing delete removes the character after the insertion point. And that concludes the information uh, that we're going to have for video two about the information that's over pages word six and word seven. Uh, video 3 is going to cover over the next section in which we're going to save the document. So go ahead and you may now move on to the next video.